Hey there, Mr. Reddit here. Welcome back to another episode of r slash Entitled Parent Stories. Our first story we'll be reading today. Karen screams, show me the policy. After that, the day I gave my four weeks notice. And after that, Karen is angry that we did what she asked us to do. Now Karen told me if we can get 1000 likes on this video, she won't demand to see any more policies for an entire week. So please smash that like button. And if you're new, subscribe and turn on notifications for new stories from Reddit every single day. And huge shout outs to our newest official members of the Re Army, Sean Dawson and Unser Productions. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. Join as an official channel member today and I'll give you a special shout out in our next video. Karen screams, show me the policy. I work at a fairly popular beauty brand store. I love my work. I've been there for years and as of now have no thought of quitting. But there comes a time, and often it's on a daily, when we as retail workers come in contact with one of those customers. Our cast. We've got me. We've got crazy customer. Poor team member. Team member and poor husband. It was a Sunday. A fairly busy one to be exact. Now this is a little while ago, and I can't be too exact about the promotions going on, but I do remember there was an extra discount if you were a card holder. This comes into play later. I'm manager on duty for the night and making my rounds of the store, checking on customers and making sure my staff are doing okay. I notice we are running pretty low on a lot of stock, particularly our hair care section. We have some boxes in the back, but we sell it so fast it probably won't last us the night. I stock its shelves and make it as full as I can for the time being. Satisfied with my work, I decide I better go take my break before it gets too late or we have an even bigger rush of customers. As I head to the back, I see teammate come out carrying out four boxes of the specific hair care we are nearly out of. I let her know I already stocked the shelf so there is no need to do so. Teammate, oh no it's not stock, it's for a customer. She wants to buy 24 boxes but this is almost all we have. I'm going to get the last boxes in the back for her. Me. Leave the other boxes in the back. You know we can't sell that many to one person. And even if we could, we don't have the stock to hold us over. Let me go speak to her. Crazy customer stands at the cash with poor teammate speaking to her. Poor teammate is Chinese and speaks Mandarin, which crazy customer also does. We have a very diversified team, which is so amazing because there is usually a team member who can speak a different language if a customer isn't fluent. I go up to crazy customer with a smile and a soft voice. Me. Hi there. I heard you wanted to purchase our hair care? Crazy customer. Yes, that's right. I want 24 boxes. Me. I see. Unfortunately, we are not able to sell that many to a single person, especially with our promotion right now. Crazy customer. What do you mean you cannot? I'm a paying customer. Me. Oh, I understand. But due to the fact that many people resell products after buying items for a fraction of the cost, we are unable to sell that many. I'd be happy to sell you the four boxes teammate brought out though, as she already said she'd give you them. Well, what if my husband buys? Can he get more? I want them all. Me, knowing we had a few more boxes in the back room. I'm sorry, this is all the stock we have and that I can give you at the moment. We will be expecting a delivery tomorrow. I can ask my stock girl to bring up extra boxes for you specifically. Why won't you just give me them all now? Your employee said there were more. Me. Ma'am, the policy is we are only supposed to give two boxes per customer when there is a sale. I'm giving you four, which already covers both you and your husband. I'm sorry, but many people love this hair care and that's why we have a limit. She now starts to go off at poor teammate in Mandarin, which I was later told that crazy customer said I wasn't letting her buy because she was Asian. What? And that the rules were stupid and the whole team was useless. We now have the biggest line and are down to one cash. Luckily, I have one of my fastest team members at cash, but that doesn't stop customers from glaring at crazy customer and becoming frustrated. Me. Ma'am, please don't yell at my staff. The policy is- What policy? Where is the policy? 
she yells at me, getting overly close that I nearly have to step back. Me, still trying to sound sweet. The policy comes from our head office during times when we have sales like these. Normally, I may be able to give you more if, one, it's regular price, and two, if I had the stock. Give me what I want! I want it all! Give it to me! And show me the policy! Me, beginning to get annoyed, turns my voice a little more stern. This is all I can give you. If you like, I can give you a few more off the shelf that are already unboxed, and tomorrow... I don't want to come tomorrow! I want it today! Tomorrow the cardholder deal will end! This is our policy. Show me the policy! Crazy customer smashes her fist down onto the counter. Show me the policy! Show me the policy! Show me the policy! Each time she says policy, she brings her palm down and slaps the counter. She goes back to shouting the same thing she did before at poor teammate who tries to calm her down with her soft, gentle voice. Customer is having none of it and calls her husband to come in. Her poor husband comes in looking tired and beat. His wife is going off at us and he doesn't even look shocked, nor does he look annoyed with us. Instead, he kind of gives me a look to say, sorry. Me, ma'am, I'm going to ask you again. Please don't yell at my staff. You can yell at me, but there is no reason for you to yell at them. Also, if you want the hair care, then please buy it or refuse what I can give you and take none of it. The choice is yours. I'm finally over with this situation, just as everyone else in the store looks to be. The customer decides that yes, she's going to take the shampoo and take me up on my offer of taking a few more out of the box products. Not sure she understands the concept of a few more, as she scoops them all up off the shelves, leaving them bare and even goes as far as taking the few we had on our display. I'm taking these too. I nod knowing those display products have been sitting there for months and if she wants old products then so be it poor teammate helps me bag the hair care as i ring up her purchase although their purchase is way over the limit i have some satisfaction knowing i still had a few boxes in the back for the shelves and other customers that i would stock later when they left poor husband pulls out his credit card and pays for the purchase saying thank you to me i smile feeling bad for him and wish him a good night. Crazy customer is still huffing as she counts her hair care one by one as though I might have ripped her off. When she is finally done, she has her husband pick up the bags and she storms off. The husband somewhat fumbles while picking up the bags and I let him know that if he needed to make two trips, we would watch them for him. He kindly refuses and says thank you again before leaving. Poor teammate turns to me, shock on her face. Me, who is annoyed, starts to laugh and just shake my head. I ask for someone else to come on cash so she and I can step away. I tell her she did a great job, thank her for keeping her cool, and that she could go take a small break to calm her nerves. Teammate tells me she is sorry and wished she never told crazy customer we had extra boxes in the back. She wasn't thinking of the rules at that moment, just the sale. I tell her she's fine and ask if she could restock the hair care. Finally, it was time for my much-needed break. About a year passed before I saw a crazy customer again, and to be honest, I'm surprised she even came back. Twice so far, to be exact. The first was to pick up some lotion that she had multiple coupons for. I let the staff know that even though they weren't to use more than one per day, to just do it so we could avoid a fight. The second was, of course, right at close, and we had to wait extra for a crazy customer to leave but she didn't give us any more trouble. This story became a good chuckle amongst the team working that night. If you were a cashier, would you ever bend the rules just to avoid a fight with Karen? Let me know in the comments below. Next we've got the day I gave my four weeks notice. I came to the store on a Wednesday morning to hand in my four weeks notice, but when I got there, my colleague was working the checkouts and the customer service by herself. The manager was handling the safe, so she couldn't come and help and we had to wait for another colleague to finish the unloading of the truck. So, me being a great colleague, I helped the only customer at the customer service to make sure she didn't have to wait for at least 10 minutes to get a pack of cigarettes. And just when I closed the customer service, Karen came around the corner. The customer service does have a little checkout for people with baskets, which Karen had. However, it was closed, 
and since I was off the clock and I had an appointment later that morning, I was not going to open that checkout for her. Mind you, I had been chatting with the other customer for a while and around 8 to 10 minutes had gone by at that point. And since I was in my raincoat, which is not even close to the work attire, I thought she would understand the circumstances given the huge line at the other checkout. Okay, on to the actual conversation. We've got me, we've got Karen, we've got nice lady and the manager. Karen puts the clothes sign in the magazine rack, opens up the exit and puts her stuff on the counter, aka opens up the checkout herself. Me, oh, I'm sorry miss, the register is closed since I'm off the clock. My colleague asked me to help this lady real quick since no one else could at the time, but there should be someone here in two minutes max to help you out. Karen, how dare you? I am a loyal customer and you cannot treat me like this. I am a widow and I have to do everything by myself. You are going to help me right now and I will not take no for an answer. I have always worked for my boss without getting paid. Manager, miss, if I may ask, what is the problem here? She won't help me. Nice lady. This nice girl just helped me get some cigarettes since your colleague asked her to help me out so I didn't have to wait for 15 minutes. Me. That's right. The checkout was closed since I'm off the clock and only here to give you my four weeks notice. She knew about this. Was not a surprise. Manager. Well, miss. So sorry she couldn't help you, but I'm here now so I can help you. Karen. You need to get your workers under control. That little jerk shouldn't have treated me like this. I am a loyal customer. Nice lady. Miss, she is off the clock, and the manager is checking you out right now. Can't you be a bit nicer to this young lady? Karen. Do not mess with me, you dumb jerk. Do not get involved. I'll make your life miserable. Manager. Miss, please stop insulting my coworker and the lady right here. They did nothing wrong. If you say one more bad thing, I will not help you any further and you can leave without your groceries. The customer left without saying anything else and the manager, nice lady and I had a great laugh afterwards. Another fun fact, this woman has been a Karen for at least 15 years. My parents have a hedge in their back garden which was always maintained by my granddad. Apparently, Karen lives in the same neighborhood and stopped by to ask my mom about the electric hedge trimmer and if my mom could trim her hedge. When my mom told her it was being maintained by her father-in-law, she called her a lying jerk and also told the story of her deceased husband and how she can't do it herself. And I ran into her last week. She gave me the dirtiest look I've ever gotten. It was hilarious. Would you ever do yard work for a Karen? Let me know in the comments. Next we've got, Karen is angry that we did what she asked us to. So, this took place in the summer of 2016 when I worked on NCS. This is a youth program where 16 year olds live away from home for two weeks, learn how to live independently, and then partake in a social action project for another two weeks. For this, the young people are split into teams, and usually the teams will not change unless there is a serious issue. This is important later. Cast. We've got me. We've got James, who is Karen's son. And we've got Karen, the entitled mom. I was a team leader. My team was 15 people and they were all lovely. However, the day before we were set to leave for the first week, I get a call from Karen. Hi, this is Karen. My son James was meant to leave on July 15th, but I was wondering if he could be moved to July 9th because he doesn't get along with the people on his team. The 9th is the wave I'm going on, so the decision has to go to my wave lead. Me. Hi, this is Red. I'm afraid I can't make the decision, but I can pass it on to my wave lead and see what he says. I can ask him to call you back. That would be amazing. Thank you. I pass on the information to my wave lead and forget about it because I have a load of paperwork to do. Two hours later, I get given James paperwork. James has been moved to the 9th of July wave and he's been placed on my team. He moved waves because he had fallen out with his friends on his old team and was specifically placed in my team because Karen didn't want him on a team with people from his school. My team was the only one that didn't have anyone from his school, so it seemed like the logical choice. I go through the paperwork and make all the finalizations, moving him to a room in the activity center that didn't have anyone from his school because it seemed like the right thing to do at the time. 
Fast forward to midnight on the 10th of July. I'm on the night shift. Get another call from Karen. Hi, Red. This is Karen. I have a complaint. Me. Hello, Karen. I'd be happy to take your complaint. Good. James is unhappy with his team because he doesn't know anybody on his team. They all go to different schools. They all have at least one friend, and he has nobody. And he's sharing a room with complete strangers. I sense that I can't win this battle. But luckily, when things like this happen, it can be sorted out relatively quickly. Me. Yes, he was put on my team because you asked that he was placed on a team with nobody from his school. And my team was the only one without a person from his school. I moved him to a different room so he'd be with people on his team. And that is our policy. Well, I want him moved to a team where he knows at least somebody. I didn't ask for him to be alone like this. And I want him to have his own room. Me. He can't move teams when the program has commenced, as we have no way to change the paperwork, and he can't have his own room, as there are no free rooms in the center we are at. Well, I want to speak to your boss. He was moved once before. You can do it again, surely. Me. No, we can't. Moves are only done in cases of special circumstances, such as illness or family emergency. You asking for him to be moved, and then complaining that we did it does not constitute. I can pass you on to the wave lead, but he will tell you the exact same thing. Karen just hung up on me. So I passed on the call to the wave lead, who was upset about the whole ordeal. Late on the 11th, Karen shows up having driven halfway across the country without even calling first. I'm here to take James home. He isn't happy with his team, and you people haven't been very helpful. I also want my 50 pounds for his place back. Me. Sorry, you need to clear this with the wave lead and the head of the program. Not me. And the places are non-refundable. Karen turns bright red. What? So even though you have been unhelpful, you won't let me take him home where he'll be happy? And why can't I get a refund? Me. Due to policy, I can't just let him go. I've texted the wave lead. He's coming right now. And the place normally costs 1,500 pounds, but due to government subsidies, only cost you 50 pounds. Due to this, places are non-refundable. There is nothing I can do about it. Fine. The wave lead comes and begins a shouting match with Karen after she starts threatening to call the police. Finally, we agree to let James go because we can't be bothered to argue. I pull out the paperwork I need to fill out. 10 sheets. It takes forever to do, and I am exhausted. I start to slowly slog through it all. Karen. What are you doing? Let me take James now. Me. I have to do all this paperwork, pass it to the wave lead, then pass it to the head of the program for them all to fill their bits out and sign off before we can let you take James. I also need to see some ID. She throws her driver's license at me. Can you hurry it up? It took me five hours to drive here. I want to take James and go home. Me. If you'd called ahead and told us you were taking him, the paperwork would have been done by the time you got here. I have to fill it out right, or it'll look like I lost him. I'm sorry that us accommodating your wishes for James to move have caused these issues for you, but I'm running on two hours sleep, and I'm due to clock off in an hour, so this inconveniences me as much as it does you. This is ridiculous. I'm calling the police. Me. Do it. She calls the police while I sit there doing the paperwork, and they arrive just as I'm finishing the last piece, passing it on to my wave lead. I tell them the same thing I told Karen, and they understood completely, and stayed to keep her calm while we finished the paperwork. Two hours after I was meant to clock off, James and Karen leave, and I treat myself to a nice cold can of Coke. Next we've got, Karen calls us brats for not giving her and her kid our seats. Cast, we've got entitled mom, we've got innocent kid, We've got Entitled Mom's hubby, Entitled Mom's daughter, my friend, and me. A little backstory. Both my friend and I have a membership at our local cinema. Apart from getting discounted tickets and candy stuff, like popcorn, drinks, etc., we also get two courtesy monthly tickets to watch whatever we want. Whenever you buy a ticket, you also book a specific seat. This will be important later. This time, my friend offered to use her free tickets, went online, and got the tickets. She made sure we got good seats, well over two days in advance. Anyway, the day comes and we get to the cinema. 
We buy popcorn and the drinks, headed to the screen room. The room was packed, and I really mean packed. There were a few seats left, but since we had booked tickets in advance, we weren't worried. We should have been. When we got to our seats, much to our surprise, we find entitled mom and innocent kid were set in our seats. I should also mention there were two more empty seats next to ours. This will be important later. Had the room not been so full, we would have probably sat elsewhere. But since there were very few seats left, and those would most likely be booked already anyway, we politely asked the mother to move. The conversation went like this. Me. Ma'am, these are our seats. Uh, could you give them back, please? Entitled mom, looking thoroughly displeased. Oh, can't you just sit elsewhere? These are the only four seats that are together, and we want to be sat with my husband and daughter. They had gone to get popcorn. Me. No, ma'am. We won't take random seats because the cinema is packed and seats are pre-booked. However, we could switch with you if you want. Entitled mom, pulling a face. There's people in my seats already. That's why I took these. Me. Well, that's not my problem, ma'am. If my friend and I sit elsewhere and the owners of those seats come, we'll have to give them up and then we'll be left without seats. Entitled mom rolls her eyes at us, grudgingly picked her stuff up, and she and her son moved to two of the three empty seats on the row behind us while we took our seats. So far, so good. Anyway, my friend and I got settled and got talking while we waited for the ads and the movie to start. We heard nothing from entitled mom and her kid until hubby and daughter appeared. The husband asked if she hadn't managed to get them seats together, which essentially made us doubt her story about their original seats being taken by other people. An entitled mom went ballistic. She said that, yes, she found four spaces, but had to leave because of us, two entitled and selfish brats that wouldn't allow her to take the empty seats so they could sit together as a family. I tried to cut in and explain that we didn't want to move because essentially there weren't any free, good spaces left. Nor were we sure if those seats were already booked, but the woman told me to shut up and eat my popcorn several times. She insisted that it cost us nothing to switch seats with them. Just as she was saying this, the owners of the seats behind us arrived, a couple. When they asked for their seats, Entitled Mom started berating us and calling us basically jerks for not wanting to give them our seats so she could sit with her family for an hour and a half long movie. By this stage, I'm ready to get into a fight with this wild Karen, but my friend told me not to bother. The poor couple saw that they'd be getting into problems if they dared ask for their seats, so they preferred to go and search for empty seats elsewhere. Since the row behind us only had three empty seats, Entitled Mom proceeded to sit on the aisle for the whole movie and made snide comments about us until the movie started. Thankfully, my friend was there. Otherwise, I would have most likely gotten into another argument with Entitled Mom. When the movie ended, we quickly got our things and left. Would you have given Karen your seat so she can sit with her family? Or would you have done what OP did? Let me know in the comments below. And shoutouts to our regenerals of the day. John the SCP fan, Israel, Ishan Tube Gaming, and Doomlock the Transformer King. Become tomorrow's regenerals by leaving as many reads as you can in the comments below. And please listen to my playlist every night when you go to sleep.